Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. There's a push to get electrical grids to net zero worldwide. And at the decentralized energy conference last November, we heard from companies and experts who say the world is changing fast. And the electricity grid of the past, made up of a few giant coal-fired power plants, is going the way of the dodo bird. In its place will be a much more distributed electricity grid, with thousands of energy inputs in the form of solar, wind, batteries, and other. The overwhelming message from the conference was that the technologies we need to build the resilient, low emissions, and affordable grid of the future already exist. Hi, I'm James Brereton. I'm the Principal Energy Innovator at Stanta Consulting. I work on decarbonizing everything, everywhere, all at once. That's part of our mission. And we're here at the Decentralized Energy Conference uh, to determine how we can do that in the best way possible. We used to have a centralized energy plant and we would send electricity out to the customer and the customer was whatever it needed to be and we build the plant so we could meet the peak load. That is not the way we're going to do things in the future. We have prosumers now, we're going to have a distributed energy system and it's not just the consumer that's going to change, it's the generation that's going to change to meet the consumer. Alberta already has more than 10,000 power producers, most of which are small solar energy producers. But these emerging prosumers will also participate in the functioning of the grid by connecting electric cars, battery storage systems, smart technologies, and much more. This new distributed grid, which is already being built by prosumers, will be managed using various forms of energy storage. We're going to need energy storage of all kinds. So we're going to need 10-minute storage to do UPS and power conditioning. We're going to need half-hour storage uh, to do frequency response. We're going to do four hours of storage that does demand response. And these are all electrical energy storages. So 12 hours, we can do arbitraging of energy and load shifting and smoothing. So solar energy from afternoon sunshine could be stored and used in the supper peak demand period. But then we get into seven day storage. We can do winter peak shaving where we go through the winter and you've got that peak cold period where air source heat pumps don't work and you're gonna trigger a huge peak in electrical demand. But we can use thermal storage to get us right through that peak and ride right through it. In other words, excess renewable energy can also be used to produce heat, which is stored for later use. So there is no winter peak. And then ultimately we do 180 day storage. We take the heat from the summer and the solar electricity from the summer and we shift it all the way to the winter when we need it the most. And that's how we're gonna solve this uh, decarbonization problem and the future of electrification across a society everywhere. All of these energy storage technologies already exist and can get us on the pathway to a net zero grid without spending $40 billion on infrastructure. In fact, we can use the existing infrastructure. Right now, on a single-family residential home, you use about 8% of the energy throughput capacity annually. But there's a peak. So if we could just manage the peak so that we're not all using energy at the same time, then we can make use of that pipe that's already existing in our electrical infrastructure. On commercial buildings, it's 14%. So I've already worked out that you can just double that percentage and we could put in all the EVs, and all the electrification of our heating and use the existing infrastructure. That's what energy storage will do for us. Energy Storage Canada says additions of energy storage as small as 300 megawatts could save consumers hundreds of millions of dollars by storing energy when the price is low and releasing it when the price is high. Energy storage, microgrids, smart technologies, and AI will transform the energy markets of today, says Barrington, but what's needed is an overhaul in tariff structures and new regulations to support these innovations. There's much more to this story at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.